Carlos, we have a disturbing report to add and a much more serious one that uh, Brian Oxman, the Jackson family attorney, uh, addressed the subject from the UCLA Medical Center of uh, the hospitalization of uh, Michael Jackson today and where fam family members were already uh, converging. And at the time of this, uh, he said that Jackson was in fine physical condition, but that he had a very serious problem with prescription medication and that people that were surrounding him were enablers. And he went on to say, and this is a quote, if you think the case with Anna Nicole Smith was an abuse, it's nothing in comparison to what we have seen taking place in Michael Jackson's life. Brian Oxman's name was connected to those uh, in those months after the trial, as I recall, after the right. uh, the uh, the uh, sexual abuse trials. Uh, that's uh, that's an extraordinary statement to come, especially in in the context of an interview being conducted around the time of Michael Jackson's death. Uh, I would I would expect that since this is the first we're hearing of it, it would be the first you're hearing of it as well. It is, but you know, uh, Keith, it is very much expected. When you have a lot of people surrounding a star like Michael Jackson, and there has been a lot of controversy surrounding Michael Jackson, you're going to come to ex expect statements like that. We've had several eloquent statements from Quincy Jones, John Landis, uh, Jamie Foxx talked to Extra just recent, just a few minutes ago about Michael Jackson. Several, several eloquent statements, but now you're getting people coming out of the woodwork and making statements like that, which. Um, you know, when you're surrounded by controversy, people make controversial statements. Carlos Diaz of Extra joining us again uh, to uh, put a little meat on the bones of what, uh, what we've been talking about here in the wake of Michael Jackson's death and anticipating the news conference. Thank you, Carlos. Uh, let's turn as we look into uh, whether or not uh, there's any merit to the statements from Mr. Oxman that I just mentioned and also to, uh, to the, the sudden uh, and extraordinary story of Michael Jackson's demise today at the age of 50. Diane Diamond, a syndicated columnist, investigative reporter, covered the Jackson criminal trial for Court TV and a colleague of mine off and on for uh, uh, much longer than I think either one of us would care to mention at the moment has been good enough to call in. Diane, it's a pleasure to talk to you. I'm sorry it's under these circumstances. Oh, thank you very much, Keith. Um, yeah, shocking, shocking news. Uh, you know, I remember seeing him every day at the criminal trial and thinking, how does this man survive? He was so thin and so frail mm -hmm. and so... Um, seemingly in another world and when the testimony came about him using so many narcotic drugs found in his nightstand and whatnot it all became clear i think um he over medicated himself much of his life and that may have contributed to what happened to him today he he was also anorexic and that too can put strain on a heart so if it was a massive cardiac arrest as the la times is reporting oh not a surprise to me it, it was was this um uh, i don't want to call it speculation because i i i think we're not being fair to brian oxman who i know had uh, legitimate connections into uh, the life of, of, of Michael Jackson I, is there's uh, it was is this something that had been widely believed or discussed the drug use yeah yes yes and Michael Jackson uh, admitted that he admitted going into rehab at one point um, it, it, it took up quite a bit of testimony at the trial um, and that Brian Oxman would uh, come public today is no surprise either. He actually worked uh, on some legal issues for some of the brothers and mm -hmm. then suddenly became attached to Michael Jackson. And at every turn, Michael Jackson would put out a statement saying, Brian Oxman's not my lawyer. I don't know why he's talking for me. So there's nothing ever easy when you cover Michael Jackson. It's not going to be easy in his death either. There's going to be lawsuits over custody. There's going to be lawsuits over his finances, the disposition of the ranch, all sorts of things. And I would assume the disposition of the children. Yes, and you know, Keith, I've really been thinking about this a lot because Debbie Rowe, the mother of two of the children, mm -hmm. gave up her parental rights. And during the criminal trial, she came back and she said, no, 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 I want them back. And she was awarded them back. Then, at the end of the trial, my sources tell me she wanted more money from Michael Jackson and signed something giving up her parental rights, not mm. once but twice. So now, no court would give the children, I don't think, to her, although she's a biological mother. His mother, Catherine Jackson, I'm told, is not in good health. 
the kids know her and love her, but I can't see them being awarded to Catherine Jackson. They don't have any biological connection mm-hmm. to the Jackson family. They, they, it, the, these children were not born of Michael Jackson's sperm. So, it, again, it's going to be very complicated. It's, a, it's just a tragedy all the way around. He had a fabulous life and a very tragic life all in one.